This is the video for transformations of polynomial functions. The learning targets for this are, I can describe the transformation of a parent function given a graph of the parent function and the transformed function, and I can describe the transformation of a parent function given the parent function and the function notation of the transformation. Translation is when a function is shifted either horizontally or vertically. When talking about translation graphically, we look at the parent function and see how did it move to get to the transformed function. For the first example, I'm going to use this point right here and see how did it move to get to the new function. So for this, I had to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units down. For this one, I'm using this point and it had to move one, two, three units up. For these two examples, we're gonna do the same thing. We pick a center point and see how did it have to move to get to the new center point. So this one had to go one, two units to the right. This one had to go one, two, three, four units to the left. For function notation, it's a little different. So we have our parent function f of x. For this example, it's x to the third, but that's not actually important for these types of problems. We're told that we said f of x plus one f of x is the same thing as y, so this means we said y plus 1. So this is going to be a upward shift 1 unit. Same for example 2, parent function is x squared. Doesn't really matter what the actual function is because we're more interested in function notation. We took f of x and said minus 3, which means we went down 3 units. For these, we had our parent function, x squared. Now we're saying x minus 3. So instead of y minus 3, it's the x that is affected. If we are adding or subtracting from x, it goes opposite of how we would think. Usually we would say x minus 3, that's going to be left. This one, though, is right 3 units. For example, 4. Same thing, we're adding to x, so it's going to go opposite of how we would think. So this is going to go left four units. Reflection is when a function has been flipped across a line. For functions, we usually have it flipped across the x-axis. Looking at these two graphs, for number one, our parent function was the skinny parabola. And it looks as though we took it from this line right here, the x-axis, and we flipped the graph over the x-axis. So it's been reflected vertically. Same for number two, we took our skinny line and we flipped it over the x-axis. So it too has been reflected vertically. A vertical reflection is shown in function notation by putting a negative in front of f of x. So this was f of x equals x squared, but because we're saying it's now negative x, it was reflected vertically. Same here, the original was x to the third, but now we're saying negative f of x, so it was reflected vertically. We typically do not run across horizontal reflections, but if you ever see something like this, this would be a horizontal reflection. Dilation is when a function has been stretched or shrunk. When we look at dilation graphically, sometimes you can tell what number it's been dilated by. The important thing is, can you tell it's actually been dilated? 
So if we look at the first example, we have our skinny function here, it's a parabola, and it looks like someone took it and stretched it out. So that means it's been dilated by a number greater than one. For the other example, if we look at our skinny graph, it looks like someone might have taken it and squished it inwards to get the other one. So this one has been dilated by a number smaller than one. Dilation and function notation looks like a number that's being multiplied times f of x. So for number one, f of x is being multiplied by a half. So this is dilated by one half. For number 2, f of x is being multiplied by this 2, so it is dilated by 2. These examples have multiple transformations in one. So for number 1, we took this parabola, and we can see that not only has it been shifted, but it's also been reflected vertically. So we're going to say it shifted up 1, 2, 3, 4. So we'll say translated up four units and over one to the right. And we'll also say it's been vertically reflected. Looking at example two, we can see it's been moved over one, two, three, four, five units. To the left and up one two three looking at this graph we can tell it has not been reflected vertically looking at example three it's been shifted up to And it's been reflected vertically. For number four, it's been shifted up one, two, three, four, five, six, and to the right two. But it has not been reflected. For number one, the first thing I look at is how it's been shifted horizontally. So I look here at the x, and it says x minus 2. So this has been translated right 2. Then I look here to see what's been added to f of x. So it's also been translated up 4. Then I look in front of f of x. If this were a negative 2, we would say it's been reflected and dilated. However, it's a positive 2, so it's been dilated by 2. For number 6, we look here first, so it's been translated left 1. Then we look here, it's also been translated down 3, and then we look here. So in front of f of x, we just have a negative. So it's also been vertically reflected. For this one, nothing is happening inside the parentheses with x, so there is no horizontal shift. But there is a vertical shift. So it's been translated down to. There's also this number in the front, so it's been dilated by one half. Looking at this example, we have a horizontal shift, so it's been translated left five, and there's also a vertical shift, so it's been translated down 